In the complex world of cryptocurrencies, the influence of unaccountable and unelected international organizations on our daily lives cannot be underestimated. These organizations often wield significant power through their regulatory recommendations, which have a global impact. Recently, a major international group of securities regulators, operating under the oversight of the SEC, United States Securities and Exchange Commission, released recommendations on how decentralized finance, DeFi, should be regulated. In today's video, we'll break down these recommendations and explore their potential implications for the crypto market. The report we'll be discussing is titled, Final Report with Policy Recommendations for Decentralized Finance, published by the International Organization of Securities Commissions, IOSCO, late last year. Notably, the SEC, under the leadership of Gary Gensler since early 2021, played a pivotal role in shaping these recommendations. It's crucial to understand that these so-called recommendations often transition into regulations globally. The pattern is not new. Similar trends are observed with other international organizations like the Financial Action Task Force, FATF, closely affiliated with the United States. Non-compliance with these recommendations, often presented as requirements, can lead to repercussions with the U.S. and its allies. Unfortunately, many people overlook reports from these international bodies, especially on niche topics like crypto. However, reading these reports can provide valuable insights into future developments in your country. IOSCO's recommendations on DeFi are particularly significant, as they could potentially evolve into regulations in the near future. IOSCO has outlined nine recommendations for DeFi, aiming to see them implemented as regulations worldwide. We will dissect each recommendation shortly, but first, let's delve into the report's perspective on DeFi. The report begins with a concise overview of DeFi, emphasizing its decentralized nature, where applications offer traditional financial services like borrowing, lending, and saving without intermediaries. This peer-to-peer -peer structure eliminates restrictions such as KYC and trading limits, posing considerable competition for traditional banks. However, the unregulated nature of DeFi brings risks like hacks, exploits, scams, and rug pulls with minimal investor protection. Regulators, such as the SEC, often use the pretext of investor protection to restrict access to certain financial products. While DeFi has its flaws, the regulatory calls seem poised to assimilate it into the existing financial system, undermining its original principles. The report calls for global coordination to ensure uniform regulation and oversight of crypto markets. This echoes a common theme in various regulatory reports. Same risk, same regulation. The idea is to regulate crypto similarly to traditional finance, potentially eroding the distinctive features of decentralized financial services. As we continue, we'll delve into each recommendation, exploring their practical implications for the crypto market. Before we do that, if you're finding value in this video, please show your support by smashing that like button. Now, let's dive into the specifics of these recommendations and understand the nuances of their potential impact on the crypto landscape. In the initial segment of the report, the authors provide a contextual backdrop on IOSCO's DeFi regulations, revealing that these have been in development since March 2022. Not surprisingly, this coincides with the explosive growth of DeFi during the crypto bull market in 2021. What's particularly revealing is the author's disclosure of the actual motivation behind their push to regulate DeFi. One of the key reasons they advocate for global DeFi regulations is to facilitate a level playing field between crypto asset markets and traditional financial markets. This underscores the competition between decentralized finance and established financial institutions. Interestingly, the authors adopt a rather simplistic framework, employing the why, what, who, and how approach in shaping these DeFi recommendations. The why revolves around the perceived significant risks DeFi poses to investors and traditional markets, essentially challenging established financial institutions. The what encompasses borrowing and lending protocols, decentralized exchanges, and possibly liquid staking protocols, all seen as potential threats to the status quo. The who aspect takes a concerning turn, reflecting a trend where regulators are increasingly targeting individual crypto developers, as seen in the crackdown on projects like Tornado Cash. The report explicitly calls for identifying the regulatory touchpoints of DeFi protocols, 
paving the way for crackdowns on key players. Down. The how of turning these recommendations into regulations is where the opacity of unaccountable international organizations comes into play. Despite their claims that these are mere recommendations, the reality is that they often hold binding implications. This underscores the need to scrutinize these directives, especially given their potential to reshape the crypto landscape. Moving on to the second part of the report, the authors provide a backdrop on the DeFi niche. They start with a somewhat contentious proclamation, suggesting a common misperception that DeFi products are materially different from traditional financial markets. They downplay the distinction between peer-to-peer -peer transactions in DeFi and the involvement of humans in coding these protocols, using this as a basis for government regulations. However, this overlooks the fundamental decentralization of many DeFi protocols designed to operate independently of centralized entities. The authors also incorporate a broad enterprise-level viewpoint, arguing that all of DeFi is inherently tied to larger corporate structures. While it's true that some DeFi protocols have private companies and nonprofit foundations, the decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, governing most protocols challenge this viewpoint. Notably, the report foreshadows a potential scenario where regulators target DAO token holders, emphasizing the concentration of voting power among a small percentage. As we transition to the third part of the report, where the nine DeFi recommendations come into play, the authors state that IOSCO issues these policy recommendations to assist its members in applying existing standards to DeFi. Notably, IOSCO's members include almost every securities regulator globally. The authors stress that these recommendations should be integrated into existing regulations, potentially reshaping the DeFi regulatory landscape even in countries with robust regulations. The first recommendation urges regulators to scrutinize DeFi products and services to determine the appropriate regulatory response. This involves assessing the location of key individuals and institutions, including miners and validators. The second recommendation instructs regulators to look for anything that could be classified as a securities offering, extending beyond governance tokens. This broadens the scope to include activities such as staking, as seen in the SEC's lawsuit against Coinbase. The third recommendation emphasizes the need for regulators to hold individuals and institutions accountable for operating DeFi products or services, a potentially far-reaching directive encompassing oracles, bridges, miners, and validators. These recommendations signify a shift toward a more detailed and technical examination of blockchain operations by regulators. In an interesting turn of events, the recently passed Data Act by the EU contains a provision that could potentially necessitate a kill switch in all smart contracts. The implications of this are alarming, especially when considering its potential application to DeFi protocols to ensure compliance with what are dubiously referred to as recommendations. Putting speculation aside, the second recommendation seamlessly follows from the first, calling for the identification of responsible persons, which, incidentally, includes companies. For those wondering, the authors clarify that responsible persons encompass anyone with sufficient influence over a DeFi protocol, introducing a host of definitional complexities. What's particularly disconcerting is the author's dismissal of the concept of decentralization, asserting that, regardless of how decentralized a DeFi protocol may be, there's usually a person or group with enough influence. This seems to set the stage for a modern-day witch hunt, especially when DAOs are singled out as potential entities held accountable, irrespective of governance token distribution. The third recommendation dives into the global standardization of DeFi regulation, delving into investor protection, market integrity, connections to traditional finance, TRAFI, and the potential criminalization of cryptocurrencies carrying out clearing and settlement activities. The fourth recommendation addresses the identification of conflicts of interest and requires responsible persons to provide clear, complete, and accurate disclosures. However, the lack of emphasis on KYC for DeFi users is intriguing, hinting at regulators' awareness that enforcing KYC on protocols is impractical. The fifth and sixth recommendations continue to scrutinize responsible persons, addressing risks, technological and operational aspects, and requiring clear disclosures, aligning with securities law perspectives. Seventh and eighth recommendations call for the enforcement of applicable laws on DeFi and information sharing among regulators globally. 
these underscore regulators' acknowledgement that DeFi protocols are designed to elude regulations, urging creative crackdown approaches. The ninth recommendation delves into examining DeFi's connections to the broader crypto space and traditional finance, highlighting potential risks associated with liquid stake tokens and stablecoins like USDC and DAI. Considering the potential impact on the crypto market, these recommendations pose a triple threat. Firstly, they're likely to restrict DeFi's potential and its tokens, potentially limiting its prominence in the next crypto bull market. Secondly, developers may become more cautious about building financial products or services, potentially steering towards non-financial use cases. Lastly, existing DeFi protocols may be compelled to decentralize further, potentially benefiting the crypto space in the long run. Interestingly, securities regulators globally seem to recognize the difficulty in cracking down on DeFi comprehensively. While some protocols may face restrictions, the open source nature of crypto allows for forking and revival. Ultimately, these DeFi recommendations, once transformed into regulations, could spur decentralization, innovation in non-financial use cases, and contribute to crypto's broader adoption. If you found this information valuable, show your support by smashing the like button and subscribing for more insightful updates on the evolving crypto landscape. That's it for today. See you in the next one.